Hey guys, Aqueous is off tour right now. I'm home, I got all my gear here. Figured I'd give you guys a little rig rundown. Got my guitars, show you a little bit about that. My effects pedals, keyboards, all of it. First guitar I'm gonna show you guys is definitely the favorite of mine. Um, it's always been my go-to for the past, I don't know, maybe seven years or so, but it's my PRS 408 model. Made incredibly well. So you got two humbuckers that you can split to single coil, with the little toggle switches down here. That's cool, you know, master volume, tone, three-way pickup selector. I always like to use the whammy bar. Love this thing, it's definitely my go-to. Next up here, we got the newest guitar that I've acquired here. It's the D'Angelico Deluxe DC. It's a really great looking guitar, semi-hollow. It's definitely the first semi-hollow I've ever had, so that's been cool. It's got DA-59 pickups. They're Seymour Duncans, which I believe are just custom for this guitar. Um, it's a nice, break away from the sound of the PRS, because the PRS is very, you know, I always call it like HD. It's very crystal clear, which is, which is cool for a lot of different stuff, but this is a little bit more of a vintage sound. So it's a nice, you know, nice way to change it up. Next guitar I want to show you guys is a new acoustic guitar that I just picked up, also a D'Angelico. Um, it's their XL Bowery model. <laughs> it's acoustic! <laughs> uh, I've never actually brought an acoustic guitar on the road with the band. So I'm thinking for this tour that I'm gonna do that. So. I've been liking this one a lot. And while you guys are here, this isn't a guitar that I've ever brought on the road. Well, recently anyways. I used to play a lot of gigs when we first started with this guitar. If you watched the Come and Go music video, you'll notice that this guitar is in it. This was my first Strat. This was the first one that was like a legit guitar. I played gigs with it, really enjoyed it. It's just a Mexican Strat, nothing crazy. If you can look here on the back here, there's a couple of marks. When we were in high school, Mike and I played in a jazz band. And I actually got electrocuted with this guitar, if you believe it or not. And this one time, I don't know what was wrong, but the circuits of the school weren't properly grounded. He's holding his guitar, and I asked him to hold my guitar for a minute. And I don't know what happened, but he just started like getting electrocuted really bad. And so uh, these are battle scars right here. And uh, it's funny now, every, even, even to this day, I'll hand Dave one of my guitars, I'll be like, oh, Dave! But at the time, it was very shocking. Pun intended. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at what I got on the pedal board here. Probably the most used pedal on the board is the Maxon VOP9, which is this guy here. Um, it's pretty much all of the rhythm distortion stuff that I'll do, I'll use that. Even some of the leads, if I'll add like a boost or something on top of it, I'll be using this one probably the most throughout the night. So that's this guy here. Compressor, which I just like this Maxon one. CP9 Pro Plus. It's just cool because it's got a gain knob on it. I don't, I don't use anything super heavy with the compression. Um, for the most part, I just kind of almost use it as a boost. Um, just get a little bit up. And especially like when we're doing, like Mike and I are doing guitar harmonies. You know, you get a little bit more sustain, bumps up in volume a little bit, so that's cool. And then the main distortion that I'll use for solos uh, is this OSD9 soft distortion. A lot of times I'll stack them, uh, the VOP9, with the OS D9 for a lot of the solo stuff, but sometimes when I'm starting the solo out, I'll just leave it on, just on its own. So it's, it's, you know, it's similar, but it's got its own little flavor, and I have the gain set a lot hotter, and uh, the level up a little bit, so you can, you know, for more of a solo tone. And then if I want to stack it, it gets a little loud, but... And you can get a lot of sustain out of it too, which is really cool, especially when you, you can put it in the neck and go up high. The Analog Man, the Sunbender, really nice sounding fuzz pedal. Um, I've been using that when we play live for a little something. So using that for that is really nice, it's a cool sounding fuzz. Um, also in the Analog Man thing here is uh, the Beano Boost, really cool sounding boost. Um, it's kind of in that, that vintage-y kind of. You can get almost kind of fuzzy when you, when you turn it up pretty loud, so. RMC3 wah here on the end. Wah pedal, it's, uh, I really like it mostly for kind of like lead stuff actually. Um, you know, you can do like the, the funky thing. 
sounds nice for that. Um, but also gets kind of like this cool, like throaty kind of sound with the leads. Especially when you play down low. I have the, the TC electronic, the flashback delay. The way I have it says just on the analog setting. Just kind of nice, nice and smooth. Uh, and then I have this other delay on here, uh, DD3. It's actually a DD7 in a DD3 case, but um, I'll have that for some crazier kind of delay stuff. So it's nice to have a couple options for some other things. And then, yeah, phaser chorus. I have them pretty standard the way I got them set. You know, kind of a vintage sound. Nothing too crazy, and same with the chorus. Just a nice sound of chorus. Just the boss, uh, the chorus ensemble. And you put some, put some delay on there. You got some nice sounding chords. Mwah, beautiful. Also got the boss uh, super octave. Don't use it too much, but it's fun to, you know, sometimes do some little lower bass things or you know lead stuff. <laughs> Another pedal that I just picked up that I like a lot uh, is the Mark Letiri Melody Overdrive. The way I've been using it now is mostly just for like heavier riffs. So like sometimes when we'll go into like the heavier part of origami, I'll use it. I also have uh, the H9 Eventide. You can do a lot of crazy sounds with it. You can really do just about anything you'd probably want. Um, what I'll normally use it for the most uh, is the Leslie Simulator. And then the other tone I'll use a lot with it is the uh, envelope filter. Kind of like a Jerry, you know, Jerry kind of tone. Okay, the amp I've been playing for quite a while now is a Fender Twin Reverb. Um, I get all the tone from Wario here. He is the uh, tone controller. Uh, the, uh, the first two keyboards I'll talk about that I have in the keyboard rig, uh, Prophet 6, sec uh, Sequential Prophet 6, um, Moog Sub 37. Uh, the Prophet's a newer introduction, um, newer thing for us. Uh, really just nice pad sounds, really great poly synth. Um, been using it on a lot of the newer tunes. Um, trying to put it in some older tunes, letting a lot of jams just whenever it kind of comes to that kind of, kind of vibe you're trying to set. Um, but on the newer tune, like Be the Same, I've been using it for the, the chords. Also, um, what in uh, Come and Go. Spooky, haunt, haunty kind of thing. You can get crazy with it, it's a lot of fun. Um, Moog Sub 37 I've had for a while. Um, I use that for most of the lead stuff if I'm doing any kind of solos or any kind of lead licks. That's cool. Um, and uh, I like this tone a lot. The, it's actually just one of the presets, uh, the Lyrical Theremin. I mean, any kind of solo stuff I'll do uh, up here. I can get real low with it too. <laughs> All right, and the uh, third keyboard, which is the one that's always on the bottom, is probably my workhorse keyboard. Uh, it's the Nord Electro 5D. Definitely the go-to instrument um, as far as the keyboards are concerned. Uh, all the organic sounds, your pianos, roads, you know, all in that same. That's the squeaky pedal. That's what you got there. Also the organs. Clap. 
halves so I can don't do it. But one of the other cool things I'll use it for, um, actually for split the difference, um, I'm the one designated to actually set that loop. So uh, I have a setting right on here for it, and then it goes right in. And so I'm able to split the keyboard so I can still do the loop as well as uh, the road sounds as well that come in underneath. So I'll show you that. Well, that's the rig, everybody. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you out there on Aqueous Tour.